So, George, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Is that okay? Yes, please, Kenneth. Uh, please, first of all, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and, um, yeah, a little bit of yourself. Who are you? Mm, there's not much to tell. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Dutchman by nationality, uh, yes. at least for the moment. And uh, I have been living in Switzerland for a, a decade now, uh, as of today. Almost yes. Swiss, yes. Well, let's see. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but I, I like it here very much. And uh, I've been working in the Himalayas for uh, 35 years, I believe. So in the kingdom of Bhutan and in the kingdom of Nepal, now the Federal Republic of Nepal, and in the Indian uh, Himalayas or Himalayas, uh, both pronunciations are used. How do you get an idea of writing a Bible of tea? Such a complex and difficult subject. I mean, I'm going to show this book to our audience. Look at this. This is the tale of tea. How, how much, what was the weight? It's almost three kilograms, 2.86 or something, I, I believe, or someone weighed it for me in a tea shop, actually. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> mm. So how did you come up with the idea to make a three kilo book about the history of tea? Oh, that is a good question. I think, uh, uh, I, like many people, like very many people who love tea, I was interested in tea from a very early age. So in my childhood, I was uh, 10 or nine or 10 and I was interested in tea. So I asked questions about tea uh, to my mother and she answered these questions to the best of her ability. And, uh, but I kept asking more questions and uh, uh, she could not give satisfactory answers and told me to ask one of the, uh, as you know, Holland has a colonial history. So, yes. uh, uh, and, and our family has a colonial history. So she asked me to ask uh, an auntie who was not an auntie, in fact, in any respect, but, but except that she was a close friend of the family's and she was uh, 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 a Chinese uh, uh, lady, straight Chinese from the, the Dutch East Indies. And I asked her and she answered a number of questions, but she said I should read about it. So, so okay. my mother said I should read about it as well. So I started reading about it. And I did this, of course, throughout as, as, a, as, a, as one of my many interests. Like most people, I have many interests. And so it was just one of many interests. But whenever I read so about I it, <laughs> uh, uh, again and again, I found that many stories that were told about tea were turned out not to be quite true. In fact, they're inaccurate or they're, or, or, and, and so I read more and more. And as I read more and more, I started uh, uh, recording more sources, taking notes, and then I, I uh, finished my studies at university. And then I, I uh, started doing research in, in, in the Himalayas or Himalayas. And I, and I kept uh, 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 publishing a lot of things. But on the side, whenever I was visiting libraries or conducting research, I did also indulge my interest in tea history. And sometimes I was quite amazed by what I found, historical facts contradicting stories that are often told about tea. And then at one point, this volume of notes reached the critical mass and I could not leave it alone. And then well, I had no. so, so, so many notes uh, about tea that I thought, well, I should just write it all down. And I wrote it down as a, as, as a narrative. And then it began to take over. So I, I had to, uh, Although I still kept publishing constantly about the other topics that I normally publish on. You say in the book about that the tea is actually the beginning of the globalization. Can you explain that a little short? Oh, uh, perhaps not in short, but I'll, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. It really is true. And, 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 uh, and uh, um, that the tea is the beginning of globalization, of course. Um, uh, if you want to tell the tale of tea, you have to tell the tale of globalization. 
because he began in, in Asia, but once uh, it became a commodity, uh, because European maritime expansion towards Asia occurred before people knew what tea was in Europe. So that uh, began for other reasons. And, but once it was established, it became the, in terms, in econometric terms, it became the most important commodity uh, financially for the trade between Europe and right. Asia. And, and it influenced uh, the courses of the, uh, the, the Dutch East India Company, later the, also the, the, the English and British East India Companies, because there were three in succession, because they kept going bankrupt or have to be reorganized. So they had three English, later British East India Company, I mean, in, in, in succession. Um, but they were also, uh, also became involved increasingly and later almost exclusively, predominantly at least, in tea. When we go back to the history, we read everywhere that tea come from China and so on, but uh, so I would like to know the beginning of tea, of the tea plant, not the tea how we know it today, but uh, I understand that also Thailand, because I work here in Thailand, so we, uh, Thailand actually played an important role in the tea history, history, or what, maybe not Thailand, but this geographic area. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, you're, you're exactly right, Kenneth. Uh, the, the region which today we call Thailand uh, is part of the, of the tea homeland. Uh, and so in the north of Thailand, which is really part of this tea homeland, uh, which, which spreads uh, across parts of neighboring countries um, in the north of Thailand is where tea was first used and of course as you know tea was first consumed as a as a, a comestible as, as something that you ate you ate the tea uh, leaves uh, and of course that's the most obvious way to use them if you encounter them in nature to, to yeah, chew on yeah, them you start to chew and, it yeah, and, yeah. or to to do something with them so that you can chew on them as a quid and of course they're still fermented in the north of Thailand to make myang as they are in in Burma where it is a, quite a, a usual way of consuming tea still. So so uh, the, in the beginning people were eating the tea and uh, do you but do we know if they were they also fermented in the same way as they do today like in, in Burma and Thailand or has it changed a lot do we know that or not? It's, it, it seems uh, to be that they fermented it, uh, and, uh, and this practice has been preserved to the present day. And so uh, we have uh, people fermenting tea, and even some of the types of tea that are drunk today, puar, is based on fermented tea, is, is made from fermented tea. So you think that after people started to eat it, then they started to make poor cakes or what happened what do you think it took quite a long time they it took quite a long time before they were making poor cakes but at one yeah. point and and that long and involved history is told of course in in the rather heavy book that you were yes uh, <laughs> yes uh, so the, <laughs> i know but, uh, so there were many stages and that is a quite a long and involved story how and it's documented in the book because it is documented in historical sources how people started using uh, the tea uh, also uh, and 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 how certain people started objecting to the mm. fact that that they, that that people were adding all of these other things to the tea so the tea plant uh, the tea plant has developed from uh from the bush, the, the wild bush that was in the mountain when people started to eat it, no? And it developed to many different kinds of, of tea plants in the plantations that we today make teas from. Uh, would, would that be the time also when they started to like, div, like make different hybrids and so on on the tea plant? When I the think Liyue... that happened before. before. I think that okay. happened before because I, I, I what you see is that as soon as people start cultivating mm. or or harvesting anything in the mm. wild, yes, uh, 
not for every species. There are a few species for which the wild type and the cultivated type are uh, are the same. But with rice and and all these other species, as soon as people start interfering with them, uh, they do change. Most species. So so you can expect that this happened to tea and perhaps uh, what we call Camellia sinensis variety Assamica is the wild variety and perhaps Camellia sinensis variety sinensis is actually the product of of these centuries of of human selection for certain traits less astringency and and, and uh, such traits. So here at monsoon tea we have this concept about what we call forest friendly tea as we try to use that that might be an original tea plant the asamica and that you have told me about so much and we try to use that plant and we try to convert the mian plantation that today doesn't make any money for the farmers to turn it into tea for people to drink and uh, so I would like to just, you know, what do you think about this kind of concept, the concept of growing tea, not in plantation, but in the forest? And what do you think would be a, as a positive result of that and negative result of it? I, I can't think of anything negative. I, I <laughs> in taste, of, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, that's, a, that's another thing. Both of those things bring us back to... Uh, this man who wrote this eloquent work on tea in mm. Tang Dynasty, uh, uh, China, uh, Louis, Louis. He, he wrote that uh, what you like in tea is actually a matter of taste. And, mm. and, 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 and so the, the proof of the pudding, as it were, is in the tasting. And it's also a matter of personal taste. But yeah. you have a great variety of ways of preparing tea and a great variety of tastes but this man he also wrote that he that that the tea that was found in nature the the naturally occurring tea plants had a better flavor than those cultivated in tea orchards or tea gardens so these these uh, uh, he himself and he was certainly uh, uh, a connoisseur of tea he preferred this this flavor of wild tea that had grown undisturbed in nature in 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 a context where the tea plant was in harmony with the with the forest and then you 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 have been um, showing that the tea produced in in such plantations actually uh, attracts the attention of 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 uh, uh, culinary artists who have Michelin stars and are using yes, this with pairings because the, the flavors that you have derived uh, from this forest friendly cultivated tea in such a natural and environmentally friendly way uh, has yielded flavors, natural flavors, which, which are then paired with exquisitely produced dishes. I think that is really the proof of the pudding that, and you have done that. And so it's, yeah, uh, no, it's it's a major contribution to Thailand as well, I think, to the to the uh, to tea. to the, uh, tea tradition of Thailand. I think it's a, a very great contribution, and Thank you. of course to the environment. It's it's wonderful. No, well, it's uh, it's uh, the idea. I think it's uh, when you talk about all the insects and so on. For me, I want to do a business that is good for me that is good for the people who live in the forest, that is good for the trees, that is good for the insects, that is good for everyone. And that is, uh, I see as a, as a way of that we have to start to act in this uh, sustainable way that not only think about our own wealth, but wealth for everyone, but even the small little insect. We have therefore like made this biodiversity. Yes. So this is a tea where we work with this uh, uh, tea fauna project where, uh, we, they are you know, our Russian friend, and he's like checking what kind of insects live with the tea and so on. And this is our logo of the forest friendly tea that we mark uh, like this. And uh, because uh, these small little things, they are distinguished in a very fast, it goes very quick, and, but we need them. They are small and they are maybe kind of irritating to have on your skin, but they are very important.
Thank you so much, Professor George. And uh, um, that was all the questions I had about. Uh, well, thank about you, Kenneth, for the discussion, but also thank you for, for doing what you are doing with. <laughs> with thank you for making this wonderful book that, that clears out so many things in the in uh, the question marks when you work with tea and also if you drink tea if you read this book you will give it a it gives you another perspective that makes your cup of tea taste better actually <laughs>